Hello and welcome to this new episode of Not So Fast. Um, in this video, what we are going to discuss is the concept of reversibility in physics and the idea that the laws of physics would be reversible, as it is often claimed in popularization videos and books. Um, we are going to uh, divide this subject into multiple parts. So today is part one, where we are going to introduce a very specific definition of reversibility and essentially try to evaluate uh, this property for uh, one specific kind of theories in physics. Now, the other parts of the series of videos will rely on different definitions um, of the term reversibility and also different uh, theories that we are going to evaluate against these definitions. The concept we are going to focus on is what is called the invariance under time reversal. So the way it works is, is essentially as depicted. You've got a law of physics uh, here, which is on the left and right hand side, just to say that this law uh, actually might be different. So the law on the left might be some particular law you've, you found out, and then the law of physics on the right is a different one. Now, what we do when we check for invariance under time reversal is that we need to imagine putting this law of physics, often in the form of a mathematical equation, we put it basically in some kind of machinery. And this usually is going to be a conceptual and mathematical machinery. And when it comes to time reversal, this particular machinery is precisely going to invert the uh, time. So mathematically, it essentially changes the time t into, into a new time uh, called minus t, okay, which is like literally minus 1 times t. And obviously, minus t is going in opposite directions to t. Now, once we, once we have operated this transformation on the equation, then we check what the equations look like now. So on the one hand, if the law of physics is still the very same that you started with, then it is said to be time reversible. If, on the other hand, this is not the same uh, as the one you started with, so it's not exactly looking the, the same way, um, then basically this is called not time reversible. So that's basically how this works. And what I want to uh, evaluate in this video is basically how Newton's second law actually fares uh, against uh, this uh, time reversal transformation. So, as usual, please be reminded that if you apply Newton's second law, you need to be in a given inertial frame, which is where the second law actually makes sense. And once this is reminded, then we can move on with this particular analysis. So, what we are going to look at here is that we are going to apply a transformation that changes t into minus t. And first, we want to evaluate how the left-hand side is going to change upon this transformation. So uh, if I actually check, then this is going to look like, first I've got the numerator, which is m, and then d2r, which correspond to the second derivative uh, of the r, which is a position here. And then we've got as a denominator, we've got a minus dt, but then squared, right? So the t transformation into minus t has led to a minus dt at the denominator. But this minus dt is actually squared. So we are going to get, in the end, m, and then the second derivative of r with respect to time, with respect to this new, in fact, inverted time. So we see here that the actual shape of the left-hand side is totally unchanged by this time uh, reversal transformation. Now, obviously, for Newton's second law to be time reversible, we need to have also the right-hand side to be exactly the same. So let's have a look at then the right-hand side for specific cases. The first case I want to look at is basically the case of the weight, which is one of the most popular, uh, let's say, force that is known by people who have studied a little bit mechanics. So this is minus mgz, so z here is a unit vector that goes in the vertical direction. And then g here is the acceleration of the weight on Earth. Now, if I want to check how this is going to transform uh, upon reversing time, essentially, this is going to look like the very same. Both m and g are 
constants, they don't depend on time, and therefore I'm going to have the same outcome. So you see here that if I actually uh, compare the two, they are exactly identical. So because they are identical in this case, then I can say that this particular um, equation is actually time reversible. Now it turns out that although we've looked at the weight, the weight is a very specific uh, example um, of a larger class of forces, which are called conservative forces. Now, if you would like to learn more about conservative forces, then please do let me know in the uh, comment section below. Uh, but otherwise, what I'm going to admit here is that uh, simply I will pronounce the name conservative forces and uh, simply state that Newton's second law is time reversible for uh, conservative forces. Let's have a look at what we have when we look at some of the forces. So for example here, let's take uh, the case of a fluid drag. So if you have uh, an object moving into a fluid, then if it's not moving too fast, it's going to have a force which is uh, opposite in direction to the velocity of the object. So that's minus then this dr over dt. And then there is basically a proportionality factor k, which is called the drag coefficient. Now, uh, if I check how this is going to change upon inverting t, I actually get that this is minus k and then dr over minus dt. So if I try then to match these two things, then I get basically that uh, they don't match because there is a sign difference. So in the end, I've got that this particular equation is not time reversible. In fact, uh, fluid drag belongs to a class of forces uh, which are called non-conservative. And it turns out that um, Newton's second law is not time reversible for non-conservative forces. So what we have seen here is that if we look at Newton's second law, which is one uh, of the most fundamental laws of classical mechanics, then we end up having uh, some forces for which uh, Newton's second law is going to be time reversible and some of the forces for which is, is not going to be time reversible. Okay. Now, what I would like to, uh, to do is basically look at a final uh, case uh, which is quite specific, you will see. So now what, what I would like to do is to look at uh, a specific case, which is the case of a magnetic force. So here you've got Q, the charge, uh, the charge of some particle or object, then times the velocity, and then this is a cross product uh, with the magnetic field B, which is exerted uh, on the particle. And I want to see how this thing is going to change upon time reversal. And it turns out that this is not as easy as it looks. So why is it so? Well, it turns out that there are two different cases which are um, discriminated in the literature. The first case is if we assume somehow that the magnetic field is static and therefore is simply a function of space. Then in that case, you're going to have that this is Q times dr over minus dt and then cross product with b. Now, there is another scenario to consider, which is uh, the source-dependent magnetic field. Now, in this view, the idea is that a magnetic field actually does not come from nowhere, but emerges from uh, an electrical current in particular. And what that means is that if we um, invert time, then uh, the current is going to go in the opposite direction, and so will the magnetic field as well. As a result, we get that the magnetic field gets a minus sign to it um, upon time reversal. So in the end, we've got Q dr of a minus dt and then cross product with minus b. Now, obviously, you see that in the case where you then put all the minus signs together, you get on the left hand side that this is the very same expression you started with. And on the right hand side, there is a minus sign there. So it's not the same expression as the one you started with. So it turns out that we are in a paradoxical situation where this particular force is, you know, at the same time reversible and not reversible depending on the strategy you use. 
you see what happens here is that uh, when you uh, uh, apply a transformation of time reversal you need to be careful about the unsaid uh, stuff and usually the unsaid stuff is that you do a time reversal all other things being untouched now depending on what you decide to touch let's say or untouch then essentially you are going to affect the outcome of this particular reasoning in fact this has been discussed in a recent paper by philosopher Valia Allori in which she actually discusses these particular ideas that depending on the philosophical position that one adopts, then you end up uh, essentially having a different outcome for the time reversal invariance uh, of the equations of motion. So what do we get from this? Well, first of all, we have seen a very specific definition of reversibility uh, in the name of invariance of equations upon time reversal. Now, we've seen as well that when it comes to Newton's second law, uh, which is one of the most fundamental laws of classical physics, then it's actually um, reversible in this sense, but only for a class of uh, forces, which are called conservative forces. If forces are non-conservative, then usually that's not the case, and the equation of motion are not reversible. Now, we also saw a very interesting case which is that of electromagnetic forces. And so if a magnetic field acts on a moving charge, then whether or not this is time invariant depends essentially on the metaphysical viewpoint that people are adopting when they decide to revert, reverse time. And the outcome depends on this. This is still an open question, which is debated, uh, as I've illustrated in the video, and that's kind of what it is. And that's what science is about. It's precisely discussing these things and see what we need to actually accept to get a, a particular outcome. 